Hey everyone, Trevor at Top Loaded Gaming. I was recently tagged in a video by ddanny 29 and he was originally tagged by the NES Addict. And basically, what are we talking about here? We're talking about uh, the games, the, the NES games that we've beaten over the course of our lives. Childhood, uh, adulthood, whatever. Just what NES games have you beaten? And I want to thank uh, ddanny 29 for tagging me and uh, making me a part of the discussion. And I also want to uh, thank NES Addict for uh, basically making the video to begin with and being the inspiration for us to all talk about this. Over the past couple months, uh, me and uh, NES Addict and ddanny 29 we've all kind of noticed that all three of us, you know, can kind of relate to each other a little bit because we're both, we're all trying to, you know, beat some of these harder games um, on, our, on our channels and just, not even just on our channels, but in <laughs> in our lives, period, you know, like it, it means something to us aside from uh, our channels. Um, some, of, some of these games have been plaguing us uh, our entire, <laughs> our entire lives, some of them, so, uh, you know, it, it 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 means something to us to to overcome some of these games so we've we've just kind of become friends uh, I guess over that and it's uh it's pretty cool so uh, links in the description uh, to both NES Addict and uh, ddanny29 they make uh, really cool videos and they're both really good at video games so if that's something that uh, you're into check them out I, I highly recommend you doing that so anyways what what NES games have I beaten well to begin with I don't know if this is gonna be considered cheating uh, as far as Denny and, and Jay go but um, I wanna include these games only because there there seems to be so many people still that don't realize that that have no um, no knowledge of games that are outside of the US uh, as far as the Famicom disk system and uh, the the Famicom so I'm gonna include some of these games because I mean really most of them are, are playable on the Nintendo itself uh, so I, I'm including those um, just just to if maybe somebody's gonna watch this video and, and realize like wow I didn't realize that this game existed I'm gonna go check it out because a lot of times some of these Japanese games are pretty cheap so uh, with that being said my first game is Gradius and um, this is one of the first games I was exposed to as, as a kid and you know the, the thing is um, I had this cousin that lived right next door to me you know, and, and right now, I I basically bought the house that I grew up in. So, I, I live in the house that I grew up in. And it was just something about other places that I lived before, it never felt like home. So, it, it's like now I live in the house I grew up in. And, I, you know, I kind of prefer it that way. But, um, literally next door from my house... Uh, my cousin, his name's Brooke, so I'm going to refer to him as Brooke from here on. Um, he used to get pretty much everything under the sun as far as video games went. Uh, he was the first kid that I knew that had a Nintendo. Uh, every new game that would come out, he'd pretty much have it. <laughs> I mean, if he didn't have it, he had it rented and, you know, he would just, his mom would let him rent it for ever until they had to pay for it or whatever um, he just had pretty much every game under the sun most games that I was exposed to I was first exposed to the game at his house not by a commercial or anything else just hey what's this game oh that's uh, Metroid uh, what, what's this game that's uh, our type uh, our type super our type uh, Gradius 3 you know, it didn't matter. It it, it it didn't matter if it was uh, the Nintendo or the Super Nintendo or whatever. He was always the first person I knew to get a new system. So, um, that's how I actually got exposed to, to the Gradius franchise was over at, at uh, next door at his house. Um, so, a lot of my childhood stories involved this guy. And weirdly enough, he still 
he still kind of likes, you know, talking about some of these games or whatever, but he really kind of fell out of playing games. Like, it every time I talk to him, it seems like there's um, certain things he's kind of forgot, forgotten about or whatever. Um, but uh, I've, been, I've been trying to get him back into it because it would be really cool to have somebody, you know, to come over and sort of make videos with me and, and stuff about some of these things. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, we've all got families and things we're trying to juggle. So, but uh, Gradius, if, if anybody's been following my channel for a while, they know Gradius is pretty much my favorite, my pretty much my favorite franchise of all time. I also beat Gradius on the Famicom. I, um, I got it. Like I said, I'm a really big Gradius fan. So, I beat them both on for the fam the Famicom version and the US version. So okay, I'm going to talk about uh, quite a few games at the same time. Okay. So we've got Life Force and this was another game that I got exposed to at my uh cousin Brooks house next door. And this this game kind of blew me away uh for the time. Now the thing is I I didn't beat this version yet. I I I didn't get around to beating this version, but there, there's a reason for that. Okay, so Salamander for the Famicom, virtually the same, the same game. Okay, but the the difference is in Life Force, Nintendo of America. I am by far not super educated on this topic, but as I understand it, okay. Nintendo of America had these strict rules when it comes to uh, using nothing but Nintendo's mappers, which are these, you know, little little chips on, on the board. But in Japan, they allowed, you know, Konami to put their custom mappers. So you put on Life Force uh, for the Famicom, and you have three options. Whereas in in um, and I, I know I call it like I called it Life Force a second ago, but I'm talking about Salamander. You turn on Salam uh, Life Force for the NES, and there's only two options. Um, and to me, that that's crazy. That uh, that strict rule kind of held back uh, progress, you know, because Gradius only had uh, two options. Um, so um, I I do plan on eventually beating. Uh, life Force for the NES. It's just too appealing, I guess, at the time. Because the whole thing was Jay was telling me that Denny had just beaten uh, Life Force uh, without dying or anything. And I had f completely forgotten about it because I, I've been working on the Gradius games on my channel. And I had forgotten about Life Force. Um, so it was like, shit, I, I need to go back and, and beat Life Force now. Um, and that's when I realized the the option difference, and it was kind of like, damn, I want I want three options. Why, why do I want to play with two options when I could play with three options? So, I I beat the uh, I beat Salamander for the Famicom. Now, another couple of games for the Famicom that I I beat both of them is Parodius Da and Gradius Two. Uh, both only came out you know in in Japan for the Famicom. And both of those games have four options instead of three or two or whatever. Uh, the custom mappers in, in these cards, and I mean, you can, you can tell kind of the size difference. I mean, the, the Famicom is a 60-pin uh, board, and we have 72-pin uh, boards on, in America. And it's like, it's a smaller board, yet they fit, they had, they had more graphical capabilities than our chips and that was you know due to these really strict rules uh, but I, I I really think Gradius 2 is one of the best games on the NES it really pushes the hardware <laughs> capabilities of that system um, so next we're gonna talk about DuckTales now I hadn't I hadn't played DuckTales as a kid. Um, it was actually only recently when the remastered version came out. I beat the remastered version, and then I was like, well, let, 
let me try out DuckTales on the NES and see what it's like. Because I've never really played it. Other than seeing uh, footage of it um, on The Wizard. I think it was The Wizard that, that had some footage of it in the movie. I had never really played the game. And I tried it and I liked it and I ended up beating it. So... Next, we're going to talk about uh, Commando, if I can get this in the lighting. Um, Commando, this is a game I had when I was a kid. So, I played the shit out of this game. You know, um, it's not a game that I chose to have, but I'm still glad I had it. Because it, I, I like Commando. Um, and yeah, I, I beat it, you know, it... it, it when you play Commando and you beat it, a lot of people turn the game off or whatever, but you have to beat it like four times to get the real ending. But And, and as much of a pain in the ass I think that is sometimes, I, I did it so many times when I was a kid. I haven't, I haven't actually gone back and beat it since I'm an adult, but uh, there's so many games I want to beat before tackling that game. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see when I get to it. So next... We've got Batman, and this game is fucking great in my opinion. You know, it it, it reminds me so much of of Ninja Gaiden. Um, it, it it's so close to that that style of game that I just I love this game. Uh, I had I remember renting it um, when I was a kid, and it was it was too hard for me back then to beat it over a weekend and I always wanted to buy it and I could never find it in a store and if I could find it in the store I didn't have leftover Christmas money or birthday money to get it or, or whatever so I just I never was able to get it and, and beat it again but uh, recently I, I beat this one over a, a Facebook stream uh, if I'm not mistaken I think Jay was watching uh, <laughs> watching me on that on that stream because uh, I want to say he's beaten it like a bunch of times. But uh, I've only beat it once. I need to... Uh, I, I plan on covering that on a, on a video on my channel pretty soon. Now Mega Man, I don't know what it was. I never really got into the Mega Man series as a kid. And I think that was due to the fact that I never really seen anyone with the games. For some reason, I don't know if maybe my cousin Brooke never got into this franchise... But I never saw him with a single Me Mega Man game. And again, other than The Wizard, I had never even really seen footage of any Mega Man game. And that includes, like, the Super Nintendo or anything. It's only since I'm uh, an adult collecting games that... And, and it's not like I never heard of Mega Man. I just never played any of them uh, until recently. And for some reason... This is the Mega Man 2 is the first one that I played and I'm talking about this is only a couple years ago. This is the first one that I've ever played and it just so happens it's my favorite. So I, I mean you hear a lot of people say like um, the first system I ever played was the Nintendo uh, so that's always going to be my favorite. Uh, the first system I ever played was the Commodore 64 and that's always going to be my favorite system or some people were born with the Nintendo 64. I don't think it's just as a kid, because I, I, this this game did it to me as an adult, and it, it's still like this is my favorite one. You know, I don't I don't know. It just it just seems like there's something irrational about that. Like the, just because it's the first one, that can't mean it it it's the best one for sure. You know, but I don't know. Just these weird things your mind does to you, and it's, it's my favorite one. <laughs> This is uh, another game I had as a, as a kid, karate, the Karate Kid, and I have not beaten this since I'm an adult, but I beat this game a bunch when I was a kid. You know, it's not a horrible, horrible game, but it, it's not a great game either. And when you're a kid, the way the NES was, if you had a game, you know, somebody got you a game... You played it. You you didn't have a whole lot of games to choose from unless you <laughs> you were rich or something. Unless you were Lucas Barton. Um. 
but um, I played this game a lot, and I was a I was I wanted to be you know the Karate Kid, so <laughs> I played this game a lot, and I beat it quite a few times as a kid. Sticking with karate, we got Kung Fu, and uh, I beat this game when I was a kid. And I beat this game pretty recently. Maybe in the future I'll, I'll cover it on my channel. But uh, I think for what it is, Kung Fu is a pretty good game. You know, it, it despite how simple it is, it's pretty fun. It's pretty addicting. You keep wanting to go further, and I, I, I really like this game. For a for a launch title, it, it it's pretty good. Next game, I I gotta say I feel like this game is not nearly talked about as much as it should be, and that's Dragon Spirit. And this is an incredibly incredibly awesome shooter for the Nintendo. I mean. I would say it's one of the best shooters for the Nintendo. If you've never played this game, I really recommend checking it out. Uh, watch, watch some gameplay footage of it and just fall in love and buy the game. You know, it's not really that expensive. Last I checked, I, I think I paid uh, $8 for this game on eBay. It's a really good game. Uh, it's got solid graphics, solid soundtrack. It's even got a storyline, you know, if, you, if you're into that sort of thing. Um... So, uh, I haven't, um, I haven't actually beaten this in quite a few years, but, uh, it, it's something I want to cover on my channel pretty, pretty soon. Now, this next game I had never heard of, uh, until I actually got it, and even then, it sat on my shelf and I never had tried it, um... Mike Matei had recently did a video of him beating the game. So, I'm talking about Kabuki Quantum Fighter. And from the, from the artwork on, on, on the cartridge, it, it, it sort of looks like Captain Skyhawk or something. <laughs> that, that's almost like what I would imagine from the cover. I, I don't know. But, of course, my cover specifically you know, is all faded and, and messed up. I really would like to get a replacement cartridge for this one. But, um, yeah, just the way my... It, it's all faded and everything. It kind of just reminds me of Captain Skyhawk for some reason. And that's one of my games that I kind of don't like is Captain Skyhawk. <laughs> but the, the point is, is that when I saw Mike's playthrough of it, I kind of stopped watching it because the game looked really awesome. And instead of watching his gameplay and, and getting a strategy for it or whatever, I just shut it off and then I, I put the game on and started trying it out. And I was like, wow, this, this game's pretty legit. So I would, I would definitely recommend checking out Kabuki Quantum Fighter. Yeah! Now next, I'm going to say, I'm going to say like you, Denny. I don't, I don't know if this game, you know, is going to be counted by everybody, but this is a childhood game that I had, uh, Tech Mobile, and I remember many times as, you know, a 10, 9, 10, 11 year old pretending that, you know, I was a football player and I'd play the whole season. I would even like do the, the commentary out loud, you know, um, playing this game. And uh, I, I did so many, so many times I, I played the entire game uh, in one sitting. So I, I, I beat this game a lot as a kid. Now this is another childhood game that I had. And, you know, I remember, so let, let's get out of the way. We're talking about Trojan. Damn these lights. We're talking about Trojan, Okay. Now, like I said, I had this game when I was a kid, and I specifically remember, I mean, this one, this memory is like, this would have happened yesterday, okay? I want to say I was, I was maybe 11, 11 years old, and my mom, see, I, I had, I still have an anxiety disorder, 
and going to a doctor or to a dentist or something like that always uh you know gave me anxiety attacks and um my my mom she was like trying to bribe me i guess she was like look we're going to the dentist okay if you don't make a scene you know cry in the lobby and all of this stuff uh, we'll stop at Walmart on the way back, and I'll let you pick out a $20 Ninten Nintendo game. So, I don't remember if it worked or not, but she still let me uh, buy buy a game. And that, that's really what I remember, is, is stopping at Walmart. And it wasn't like for the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis, where they had those little, um, like, plastic rack cases that you could flip through kind of like poster the poster racks at like walmart or whatever that you could just flip through and, and look up and down all the games in the case it, it's more like the way walmart has their cd shelves set up you know where it's just these like uh racks or whatever and you can flip through uh the cds that's how the nintendo stuff was in walmart uh at least in my area back then so, and especially the, the $20 stuff. Um, so I, I remember flipping through some games, and it was mostly like uh, skateboarding games. I remember seeing Back to the Future uh, in this lot. Um, but it was all, all brand new games, and Trojan caught my eye. I, um, I, and I think, I think what it was, to be honest, is I saw... I saw the, the Capcom grid, and I thought of Commando, because I, I had Commando, so I was thinking, well, it, it might be, it might be uh, just as good as Commando, so I'll, I'll try that one, you know, um, and I remember getting it, and I remember opening it and trying it, and I, I loved it, uh, and I, I, I never got to beat it as a kid, and I only just beat it recently, but... Back then, I didn't have a capture card, so uh, it, it'll maybe be a game I cover in the future. Alright, let's get these out the way. I'm going to start getting into groups of games. So, obviously, I've beaten Super Mario Brothers. I mean, the thing is, what I really want to do with this game is I want to beat it from start to finish. I've never beaten this game without using warps. And just saying that out loud sounds like a crime. I need to I need to do that and cover it on my channel. Um, Super Mario 2. Now, I've beaten this game a bunch of different ways. I, I've done it without warps and I, I, I've done it with warps and whatever. I've just beat this game a lot. Uh, Super Mario Brothers 3. I beat this game a lot as an adult. And I beat it as a kid. Um, I always, always beat it, though. Every single time I've ever beaten Super Mario 3, I've always used the cloud. Uh, every time to, to skip this one level. And I, I can't remember what number level it is. I want to say... I'm not even going to guess. I, there, there's one level I always skip because I can't stand that one level. But um, next game I'm going to talk about is a Famicom uh, disk system. Um, it's, uh, oh, damn it. Super Mario Bros. 2, otherwise known in the States as uh, The Lost Levels. Um, really cool game, you know. I, it's harder, you know, but I thought it would be really cool. And and I'll admit, this, this was right after um, the gaming historian made his uh, video on the family disc system um, it was like after after watching that all right I, I gotta get a I gotta get a disc system and my buddy Marlon who if you watch the channel he he sends me stuff from time to time that he doesn't want and um, he had sent me a few uh, disc system games I've got Zelda 1 and 2 for the disc system um, and I just broke down and, and bought one, you know, and for anyone, uh, wondering, 
the disc system, man, sometimes you can you can get one for like ten bucks on on eBay. I mean there's some that, you know, they replace the the rubber um the little rubber band that goes around the the uh, gear, you know, because that's like I think the most common thing that goes wrong with those systems, you know, and it's kind of refurbished to you know be covered under a warranty, so those are going to be more expensive. But every now and then you can you can kind of look out and and buy a system that's still working, um, for really cheap. Uh, I ended up getting mine for. I want to say 15 bucks with shipping so it wasn't bad uh, lately I've been seeing some sell for like 20 bucks still in the box so if you're interested you know uh, get into it before they get more expensive so Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the first one Jesus, I feel like I apologize if uh, if the glare is too much. I can't even really see on on my thing. I need to get a fucking monitor set up. But um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the first one. I don't know why so many people think this is a bad game. I fucking love this game. Um. I had I hadn't beat it as a kid because I never really had it. I remember playing it, so I'm I think maybe Brooke had it. If not, I rented it a couple times. I could never get past um, the water stage. I, I do remember that, but I don't I don't specifically remember uh, a certain day playing it or or whatever. But um, recently, as an adult, uh, I I did beat it. And you know what I was doing at the time? This was before I got a capture card. Uh, I was beating games. And, you know, I, I have a local friend of mine that also collects games. And it seemed like at the time we were going to kind of start competing with each other on games that we were going to beat or whatever. Um, but he kind of, you know, fell out of it or whatever. But I was, was beating these games and what I was doing was I would take a picture with me posing in front of the TV um, with the end screen, you know, uh, signifying that I had beat the game, and then I'd add these, um, like, vectored logos of the game to the picture or whatever, um, just, just you know, to have a record of, of what games I beat and, and stuff like that. Um, and this was one of those. So... Really, I, I would like to cover this game very soon on my, very soon on my channel. Um, you know, the, the platforming, the, the controls for the for jumping and everything, it, it's kind of floaty or, or whatever. It is, I'm not going to lie. But to me, it's something you can kind of get used to. And if you okay with that part, this game is awesome. I really enjoy this game. I, I'm going to cover this soon on, on my channel. Now the next one is Teenage Mutant, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game. Now, I specifically remember playing this game with Brooke. I have not, I have not beat this game since I'm an adult. Um, I, I beat it as a kid, and I don't know if it's going to count, but basically, one night in this very room, me and Brooke were. I don't remember if I rented the game or he rented the game. I'm pretty sure I rented the game. And I called him on a rotary telephone and said, Hey, come over here. I got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. And uh, let's, try and, let's try and beat the game. And um, the thing was, he brought his, uh, his NES Advantage over. Because, I mean, obviously, they're calling it the arcade game. And as a kid, it's like, you want to play with that arcade stick. But I didn't have one. So what happened was we started arguing about who got to use the NES Advantage. Um, but when I finally got to use it, it was kind of like, man, I just prefer the controller anyway. Um, but up until that, we were arguing over 
the NES Advantage. But after all of that shit, we ended up playing the game and um, we had to go to school the next day. You know, and my mom was kind of cool that night. She let us stay up late. We stayed up to about 11.30 at night um, playing playing the game and we beat it, you know. And that's uh, that's kind of one of those cooler memories that I still have that I can remember pretty much like yesterday. So, we've got The Legend of Zelda, okay, um, the first one, and um, I didn't get into Zelda as, as a kid. I couldn't understand the point of the game. I didn't know what the hell to do. I never really got past uh, getting, getting the sword... And that was it. I never found uh, <laughs> I never found a dungeon or pretty much anything. It was like, what in the world do I have to do? I don't I don't get the concept of this. And Brooke, he had beat the games, but I never really saw him play them to to understand. And I, I just for some reason never asked him uh, what was the point, you know. So Zelda is something I missed out on in my childhood for the most part. I mean, none of the games. Ocarina of Time, none of them. Um, I missed out on, on all those as a kid. But what, ha- what ended up happening was my wife, some, sometime around uh, probably 2006, it was, it was pretty much right, right after Hurricane Katrina, um, now, I'm from Lower Louisiana, so Hurricane Katrina kind of affected us. Um, I had to evacuate me and my family uh, from Hurricane Katrina, and I had spent so much money evacuating, spending money on hotels and uh, eating out almost every night, which was probably stupid in hindsight, but um, I, when, when I got back, I was in such a bind for money. I had to sell pretty much everything I owned. Uh, I remember I had to sell um, this Paul Reed Smith guitar that was like a $3,000 guitar that I had waited almost a decade to be able to go in and have the money to go and get it. Uh, I had to sell that. My childhood toys sold it all on eBay. And all my games from when I was a kid to, to now, I had sold. But... Um, I think it was around maybe um, a year later. I, for some reason, I kept I kept my GameCube, and um, my wife got Animal Crossing because Animal Crossing is not really a game I'd ever play. It's just not my cup of tea. But the thing was, in in Animal Crossing for the GameCube, you can dig around and find stuff digging in that game. And some of the some of the things you can find in uh, Animal Crossing was old NES games, and you'd bring them back to your virtual house in Animal Crossing, and you'd get a TV or whatever. I can't remember if you had to buy a Nintendo also, or if they gave you one or what. But it was like you had to get the TV, you have to dig up the games, and then it was, it's almost like it was Nintendo's first version of the virtual console before the Wii came out. Because they had Ice, I, I want to say they had Ice Climber, the first Zelda, maybe even the second one, but I never played the second one on there. They had Punch Out, Super Mario Brothers, they had a few games. Uh, maybe what it was was all the, maybe it was all the NES Classic Series Game Boy Advance games. Maybe it was those revisions of the games that they put in Animal Crossing. I, I don't know. Maybe if somebody knows, they can let me know in the uh, comments because I'd actually be kind of interested in knowing what, what revisions of those games were in Animal Crossing. That, that would be a pretty cool topic. But um, the first time I played Legend of Zelda and beat it the first time was in Animal Crossing uh, for the GameCube. So <laughs> it's pretty odd to me. Um now, I've since beaten it on the NES, you know, because I, I wouldn't count it otherwise. But, uh, yeah, uh, I feel like I missed out big time not not understanding Zelda as a kid. And it kind of sucks, but what can you do? 
Now, Zelda 2, same thing, you know, I, I missed out on it. I played it. I played it. But it was like, what the fuck do you do? Where where do you go? Like, I had no... Con I had no... Uh, grasp uh, of... You know, you, you gotta... You gotta upgrade your character and... Uh, you gotta find the raft and the candle and the this and the that. I, I had no concept of that. It was just like... Levels and... and uh, like, that was my concept. Missions, levels. That was it. You know, I never got into like Final Fantasy or uh, almost almost no RPG as a, as a kid. So uh, I kind of missed out on on a lot of that stuff. Um, but recently, I had a friend, and he's a big Zelda fan, just like I am now. You know, but uh, he always wanted to beat Zelda too, and I was down for it. So. The thing is, uh, there's a lot of grinding in, in Zelda 2. Um, so, and I don't know if this is going to count, but basically what we did is we took turns. And most of what we took turns was on the grinding parts. And it was basically, it kind of worked out perfect because I was on, I was basically sleeping all night, uh, sleeping all day and up all night, and he was on a normal sleep schedule. So it was like, we take shifts, literally like fucking take shifts, grinding, and and building up, you know, our, our uh, building up Link to where we'd be powerful enough to go in this new area and, and beat the boss and, and all of that stuff. And if I remember correctly, I started out and then uh, got us to a certain uh, place in the game and then I went to sleep. And he started grinding. And then I woke up and I did a shift of grinding. And then when he woke up, we're pretty much like, I want to say maybe, I don't know, 18 hours into playing this game. And we weren't using a walkthrough or anything. So, you know, it was a lot of trial and error too. And when he woke up, um, we ended up beating the game. Like, within the next couple hours. So, I didn't have to go to sleep again or anything. And it was awesome. It was truly an awesome time. I haven't beat the game since. So, that's why I'm saying I don't know if it counts. Eventually, I'm going to tackle this one. It's just not on uh, the highest level of priority for me. But eventually, I will I will tackle this uh, game again. So, next, we've got the Ninja Gaiden series. Obviously, if you've been following the channel, I recently beat all three of these games, and I'm extremely, extremely happy that I finally got these games over with. Um, the only thing that kind of sucks about that is I feel like I will never play Ninja Gaiden 1 or 2 again. I feel like I am completely spoiled to Ninja Gaiden 3. You know, to me, Ninja Gaiden 3, and I know a lot of people say that the storyline is way weirder and uh, out of left field compared to the first two. But to me, it's like playing God of War, from playing God of War 1 to God of War 2 to God of War 3. Every, every game, they made small improvements, and by the time you get to Ninja Gaiden 3, the gameplay is perfect. You know, the... the from the, the sword upgrade to uh, being able to, to scale walls without, you know, having to have the steps there and um, being able to hang from, from rafters and um, the, the upgrades being transparent so you could see them. Um, just the gameplay was so tight in Ninja Gaiden 3. The enemy placements, the, the controls, God, the game is so good that... I, it sucks, but I feel like I won't ever really play Ninja Gaiden one and one or two again. But I love playing Ninja Gaiden three. <laughs> um, I, it's it's the hardest out of the three, definitely for sure. But I think it's the it's the being it's so good, being it's so much 
uh, more fun to me, in my opinion at least, to play than the other two. To me, it, it's like it's easier to deal with the frustration of continually dying. So while it is harder, it, it's like something about my character, I was, I guess, more destined to, to, to beat that game than I was the other ones. Because I captured myself beating Ninja Gaiden 3 before I captured myself being part, beating Part 2. But uh, anyways, uh, oh, and one more thing. I know Denny is trying to beat uh, Ninja Gaiden 3 right now. And while I'm going to say good luck because I'm a good sport, I'm also going to say for right now, you can eat it. Because me and Jay, we beat Ninja Gaiden 3. So, where are you at, bro? What's taking you so long, dude? Where are you at, Denny? Come on, man. No, but for real, um, I'm kind of hoping... That when Denny beats it, he's not going to make my gameplay look like ass compared to how he beats the game. <laughs> the only thing I have going for me is I didn't use the little circle flame uh, to beat the game. But knowing Denny, he's probably going to have not used any of the, 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 uh, the upgrades at all. And just beat the game, not even using the sword upgrade. Just And now that I'm saying that, that's what he's going to do. You know, he's going to start completely from scratch and, and beat the game that way. Um, but moving on, um, we're going to talk about Punch-Out and Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Now, I had Mike Tyson's Punch-Out as a kid. And um, I think I've told this story before on my channel. But um, basically, the game took me like... 17 years to beat and most of that was due because I let a friend borrow it and I never got it back but just like the first uh, Legend of Zelda the first time I beat it was on Animal Crossing for the GameCube using a, <laughs> a fucking wave bird controller so you can imagine and the thing was was you know uh, I it's been so long since I did it I, I can't be sure, but I would think being that the GameCube was right before all the HD TV shit, um, I don't think there would have been any sort of lag or anything. So, but I, I'm not positive on that. There may be small differences in, you know, uh, in the GameCube version. But the first time I beat um, Tyson, it wasn't Tyson, it was Mr. Dream because it was Punch Out for Animal Crossing. But, that's what finally got me to hone my skills on uh, Punch-Out, to where I could just beat Tyson. Like, I can run through the game, and most times, I will beat, I will beat the game without, you know, uh, losing one fight. Most of the time. I would say 9 out of 10 times, I'm going to do, uh, you know, um, a full run without, without losing a, a single fight. Um, and... Punch Out's just one of those games that it, I it, you know the thing is is I used to play uh, Punch Out with my dad as as a very small kid you know six seven years old and um, it ended up you know kind of being a competition between me and my dad of who can get further you know I remember this one time it was like <laughs> he would give me he would kind of you know give me shit. Because he could get, he could beat uh, the Great Tiger, and I couldn't. I, I couldn't understand. Um, and the thing was, is he kind of grinded out, and then I discovered that you could you could hit him in the uh, in the eye or whatever, um, and I could beat him before he actually did his attack. And I remember uh, my dad kind of freaking out about that fact. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I just have a lot of great memories when it comes to Punch-Out. But um, I've since, you know, I I've beaten uh, Punch-Out on my channel. Uh, so Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. So if you want to check that out, you know, it's one of my earlier videos. But, um, yeah, I I've since beaten them on the Nintendo 
uh, Mike Tyson punch out and, and punch out. So, more games I've been on my channel. We're going to talk about Contra, as well as Super Contra, or Super C. And, um, recently I did, uh, both, uh, No Death Run and a, um, both No, <laughs> no Death Runs on both games. Um, and Contras, they're, they're, they're super fun, man. So... Now that I changed my battery, we're going to talk about pretty much the last game uh, on my list. And that's going to be Metroid. Okay? Now, this is another game that... Well, I'm going to outright say myself. This doesn't count. Okay? But I want to, I want to discuss it because I'm probably never going to beat Metroid for the NES. Now... Metroid was another series, just like Zelda, that I didn't get the concept of what was going on. And, you know, I kind of have a funny story about Metroid, and it's about Brooke. And the thing is, he even remembers this to this day, okay? So, what uh, Brooke's mom would do is she'd make a deal with him if... He beat a game. Now, it didn't matter if it was Christmas, birthday, whatever. It didn't matter. If he beat a game, she would come and check and verify. Because, I mean, if you're a kid, you can just say you beat a game. But if he'd beat a game, he'd, he'd save it at the, at, the, um, at the end screen. And I'm thinking that would be complicated. Because it's not like we all had smartphones back then to take pictures or whatever. So you'd have to, like... I remember me and him were there, and, and uh, he had just beat Metroid, and he went to get his mom, and he told me, don't touch the TV, don't touch the Nintendo. And I, I knew, I knew that he just had to uh, get his mom to come look, you know, and the deal was... As long as he beat the game and, and she could see it or whatever, she'd go buy him a new game, whatever game he wanted. Not just a $20 one, the brand new one, whatever. You know, she'd go get him a new game. And I think what it was was the day before. I think it was the day before. We were like, I think we were playing like King of the Mountain or, or, or something like that. Where it was like flooded in his yard. And there was this like iron shelf that was laying down in a puddle of water. And we were trying to shake the other person off. And it was basically like just a shaking wasn't making anybody fall. So this dude jumps off and just comes push me into the water. And it pissed me off. So, and when he left, I fucking reset the game. And I was like, I don't, I don't know, dude. I didn't press any buttons or anything, dude. Uh, it, it, it must be on a timer or something. Like I kept telling him, like, it must, it must just stop after a little while. And um, and I don't know if it does or not. To this day, I have no idea if you have to reset the game after you beat it. But um, it's like he knew. I don't know if that was the, the second... It might have been the second time he had beat the game. I don't know. And that... I don't know exactly how long it takes someone to beat Metroid, but, I mean, it's a Metroid uh, game, so I would imagine it takes a good a good while to, to beat. And uh, so I remember him punching me in the stomach and being pissed. <laughs> it was... It was... Uh, I'll never forget that as long as I live. Um, it's like... Completely fucked him out of a game, you know, because he, he would have gotten the game and his mom definitely didn't buy him a game. <laughs> but um, see, the reason I say I'll probably never beat this game is because the first Metroid game I've ever played in my life, and this is only just recently, is Metroid Zero Mission, which is a remake of the original Metroid. Basically, the way I look at it is basically they super Metroidified 
the first NES game. They upgraded the graphics to kind of look like Super Nintendo Game Boy Advance uh, age. And they took, you know, like the lock-on system and, and some of the upgrades from Super Metroid and kind of applied it to um, the original Metroid. And I'm kind of spoiled to it, you know. I, I, I beat that game. That's another one of the games that I, I, I did that whole picture thing back in the day but um i don't i don't know I, I i turn on metroid and it's like i can't figure out like it just confuses me like what what blocks can i bomb and i don't know maybe maybe i'll try it it's just it's not it's not on a, a priority as, as far as i'm concerned but may, maybe i'll get to it one day you know but um that that's that's all my games. I mean, there might be. I, I think there's maybe a couple more games, but I don't I don't actually have them to you know spark the memory of maybe me beating them as a as a kid. Definitely, there's there's no other NES game that I've beaten as an adult, you know. But I, I'm pretty sure there's a few more games that I don't have yet in my collection that I beat as a kid. Um, but I want to thank Denny again and and Jay. Uh, D Danny 29 and the NES addict, you know, for uh, Danny for tagging me and the NES addict for, for making this video uh, to begin with and allowing us to kind of talk about this shit on our on our channels. Now, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and get the elusive Bithead 1000 to uh, I'm gonna tag Bithead 1000 and see if if he'll talk about. Uh, what games he's beaten because I'm sure I'm sure he's got some stories I mean Jesse bring it I want, I want to see what games uh, you beat I'm sure that he always talks about playing with uh, his buddy Rex uh, and it, it sounds like uh, <laughs> his buddy Rex was basically my buddy Brooke um, so I'd, I'd sure like to like to hear like Bithead. He's he's a funny storyteller, so I I think it it would make for a really uh, funny video. But um, that's gonna do it for me. This is Trevor over Top Loaded Gaming. See y'all next time.